Hi, how's it going? I'm here today to chat to my doula, Krisha Lynch, and we're just going to um, just talk about what a doula is, what a, what a doula does, and why it's important, why it can be a really huge asset for a birthing mother who, who wants support, extra support, and needs that support. So I'm going to um, just start off by asking Krisha uh, just to explain to us what a doula is and um, and give her insights uh, because she's a lot of experience in this field and she was my doula for my second <coughs> excuse me for my second baby and she just has just facilitated um, a mother blessing for me hence uh, the lovely crown and the lovely belly and everything and all the good vibes that we are uh, giving off right now <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the word doula funny old word isn't it because most people when they see it written down can't even say it so some people say are you a doula or a duala? Once I was called a duala. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually a Greek word and it means uh, she who serves. Mm -hmm. So in a way it's, it's not necessarily easily accessible. You know, perhaps a better word is somebody called a birth mentor. So really it's somebody who's with you all the way through your pregnancy, through your birth, and who's there to support you after you have your baby. Although there's a specific kind of doula that only supports women after they have their baby as well, called the postpartum doula. But your average standard dough soap doula will go all the way through from pregnancy all the way through to birth and beyond. So in practical terms, what does a doula mean? So that's a, that, that, that's a definition, but what does it mean? Um, and you know, it can mean so many, many different things for different women. Uh, mostly I think it's about having support so many women who give birth in Ireland now are living away from their family. We have about 25% of women who will give birth in Ireland are not from Ireland. So it can be hard when you're pregnant, maybe pregnant for the first time, you don't have childhood friends, maybe you don't have cousins, you don't have brothers, sisters, in-laws, don't have your mum. Mm. <laughs> so it's really nice to have somebody there who knows a lot about how the maternity system works who can support you in the choices you might need to make in pregnancy, and also who you can feel that you develop a relationship with. Because one of the things that a doula offers in our maternity service is a doula offers continuity of care. So if you don't have a doula, the only two ways you can get continuity of care is either to do what you've done, is to have your own home birth midwife, who you see all the way through your pregnancy, or to have uh, a consultant obstetrician who you pay privately but your consultant obstetrician will not be there for you in the postpartum and won't be there with you for most of the labor. So really a doula is, for most women, for the majority of women, is the only way that you can get continuity of care. So that same person that you knew all the way through in the pregnancy, that you talked to about morning sickness, that you spoke about your scan to, that was there for you maybe when uh, you, know, you had some pelvic pain, who gave you tips about things, uh, is gonna be with you in the early labor is going to come to the hospital with you if you're having a hospital birth and then it's going to visit you at home afterwards so even when women pay quite a lot of money to see an obstetrician and it can be three thousand euro is your baseline up to three four five even six thousand euro um what you're what you think you're receiving there is you think you're receiving the care of the same person all the way through you think they're going to be there all the way through your labor with you. Mm. Um, well, they are going to see you all the way through the antenatal care, which is reassuring for a lot of women, but they're not going to be there throughout your whole labor. You're going to be looked after by midwives, the same midwives that look after public patients who have paid a, not a penny. Mm. And then your obstetrician will come in at the end. Or obviously, if there's an issue, your obstetrician will perform any surgery or any assisted deliveries that are required. But in the postpartum, you don't see your obstetrician you're cared for by midwives in a postnatal ward and you will see your obstetrician for a six-week check but that will pretty much be it mm -hmm. so to have someone that you know and that you trust and who understands the system with you all the time can be very very reassuring and it means that you can express issues that might concern you or you can ask questions and I think that one of the really important things is that women voice their fears and their concerns about birth because what you don't want to have happen is going into labor and still be holding on to those fears and concerns. What you want is to have discussed them, to have named them, to bring them out into the open. And when you have a doula or you have someone who's there with you all the time, you can do that. It offers, it gives that invitation for, mm. for, for you to do that. Um, and I think also 
a lot of women are being induced in our maternity services now and that can be quite a scary prospect for for a lot of women so helping you decide whether you're ready for induction giving you information about uh, what does ready for induction mean mm -hmm. uh, giving you information as to uh, articles you might read about whether an induction is for you or not um, supporting you through the induction itself which you know can be quite hard because the contractions come very very quickly out of nowhere and just have someone there having someone there who really believes in you can make a big difference for women who are going through an induction and about a third of women in Ireland are induced now mm. so it can be really helpful and even women who are having cesarean births and people think well what do you do in a cesarean birth well that's quite a nerve-wracking experience you know you're going to submit yourself to major abdominal surgery even though you're choosing the date if it's a, a planned cesarean just having someone who comes up into the hospital ward with you is there for the pre-planning of it you're filling out all of your forms together um you know sometimes we might play cards or we might chat or i bring in you know lovely coloring for um the mom to be to do and you're trying to induce a, a kind of a an environment and an ambience that's very calm and you're reminding the mom about the baby and she's going to meet her baby soon and whilst it isn't uh, an operative procedure as far as those who are performing the operation are concerned your role is still to make it into a birth because it is a birth mm -hmm. uh, you know mom has nurtured that baby for nine months hopefully the full nine months and um, now she's going to release that baby and you're going to try and enable her to make it as calm and as peaceful and as loving as it can be so you're there for for all of those experiences. It's just so reassuring to have that person, you know, that person has your back, you know, and just to have that trust, I think that's, you know, that I think, I really think that there's a lot missing from the maternity services. It's like, you know, it's, you're, you're kind of treated like a physical patient and, and your emotional side is left, your, your spiritual side, your, you know, you're, you're not really supported in other ways apart from just physically. Mm. And I think that's where definitely do let them. That's how I felt, you mm. know, having. It was very different with home births, but I think that's why it's even more necessary to have a doula for a hospital birth. Well, I think that one of the greatest gifts anybody can give a labouring woman in our maternity services, and a gift that a woman doesn't often get, is the gift of time. Mm. So that is the greatest gift and support that a woman can have as a support mm. of time. You know, we want to move births along, we want to induce, it gets to a certain point, you're going to section. Um, we want women to come in on certain dates. Our maternity services are so <coughs> constrained um, by lack of resources, lack mm. of investment, lack of funding, lack of people working there. And the people that do work there do a fantastic job given the limited resources that they have. But it does mean that they can't give maybe as much as they'd like to give mm. to, to, to each woman. And they certainly are not in a position to give the gift of time. Mm. So with a doula, if you're going into a hospital setting, you have that time because a doula is with you at home and will go in with you to hospital when you decide you're ready. But having somebody with you at home who's seen many, many births, who knows that even though you might think you're ready to have the baby, who knows it's still really early days. Mm. And, you know, if you arrive in a hospital setting and you're one centimetre, it's very difficult to return home from that. And you're looking at a really long haul in an antenatal ward, possibly separated from your partner. And then you're looking at, you know, probably a long haul in a delivery room, possibly with an augmented labour, meaning that you're going to get some hormones to speed up the labour. Whereas if you stay at home and the doula will help you cope with all sorts of pain coping strategies, uh, if you stay at home and you come in at five or six centimetres, even at five centimetres, you've got a much, much better chance of flying through the rest of that labour because you've broken the back of it. You've actually done mm -hmm. most of it. And I think this is probably something worth saying is that people tend to think, oh, it's all about getting to 10. So if I'm five, I'm halfway there. Well, actually, no, here's the big news. If you're three, you're probably 60% of the way there. So I would say, you know, getting to that real active phase of labour, the rest of it can happen very quickly. But just getting to that point and feeling confident, making sure that you're well hydrated, that all your muscles are functioning properly, making sure that you feel in a good space, you feel safe, you feel protected, you feel you're with people who support and trust you, it's going to fly the rest of that labour. I mean, obviously, the occasional thing happens. But 
that makes such a big difference, I think. And I think particularly in our maternity services where there's so little time to give to women in that early long phase of the first part of labor, if you have somebody with you, it just makes it less scary. It makes it much more manageable physically. Mm. Um, and you have someone with you who's traveling to the hospital with you. So I think that makes a big difference. It makes a big difference for the partner, not just for mm. the woman, but a big difference for the partner. I mean, most partners have never been to a birth before. First time birth of their partners pregnant for the first mm. time. I mean, some people are in second relationships. They might have been, but most people have never even witnessed a birth. And they've been to maybe a couple of antenatal classes and they're wondering, are these contractions close together? Aren't they? Should we go? Shouldn't we? Mm. What should we do? Um, and I think it puts a lot of onus on them when to go to the hospital. When they get into the hospital, you're, you're sort of, I don't want to say a conveyor belt, but you're going through a process. You know, you're going through a series of hospital procedures. You're going through a standard set of checks. You're going through a standard treatment process. And I use that word meaningfully, treatment, which it kind of shouldn't be because you're not sick as a pregnant, mm. most pregnant people are not sick. Um, but you're going through this, this process and it's just assumed that you're going to accept everything that you're given. And the woman might have quite definitive ideas about what she wants and what she doesn't want. And quite often the partner is asked to consent to these or not consent to these, or it's assumed that the partner might make a decision on behalf of a woman uh, or it's assumed that the partner will support the healthcare professional in suggesting certain treatments and that can be really hard on a partner because afterwards god forbid the poor partner makes a mistake and the woman reflects afterwards and might say well why didn't you support me you, you, you knew i didn't want that and the poor partner they can't remember they're also you know hyped up with the situation so it's really really helpful for the partner to have somebody sitting in the room who they can turn around to and say what's the evidence for that or mm. should we consider that at this point what would be the benefits or disbenefits and a doula a good doula who understands and knows all the evidence surrounding all sorts of aspects of interventions what's happening during the birth will be able to give the information a good doula will never make a decision for a mother ever but she will give op options she will give more information and she'll support the parents in making a decision and I think when you make any decisions throughout your pregnancy or throughout your labor, it's important to feel supported and to feel that you've made a good decision. And afterwards, you know, when women reflect back on their labor, a doula is there to hold that story for them. She was also there, so she'll remember it for them. She'll remember the funny things, the intense parts, and she'll validate what the woman did. And after you've had a baby, as you know yourself, it's important, you're quite vulnerable, it's important to feel really validated in how the experience went for you. So if someone was really interested in, in what we're talking about, um, how would they go about booking a doula and finding about, you know, the doulas in their area and, and what's the cost? Well, mostly doulas advertise their services online. Um, you know, I'm online. Uh, so you can look online, you can just search for your area that you live in and just type in the area and then doula afterwards on Google. You get lots of responses from that. Uh, there are different directories uh, that you can look up and there are some doula agencies as well. Um, there are important questions to, to ask though, how experienced is the person that's going to attend you? Because um, you can do a weekend course and then you can have a doula cert. And then you can be somebody like me who's worked 15 years and has been to many, 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 many births and is very familiar with the maternity systems. And we would still be just called doulas. Mm. So it's important to, to look and to see. And I always feel there should be a price differential. You know, somebody who's done a weekend course and who's not been to a birth before, or maybe just been to two births, should hopefully be a little bit cheaper <laughs> than somebody who's been to many births and has lots of experience. So doula costs tend to vary. Um, they vary quite a lot, I suppose, when you think about it. They vary between the country and the city, obviously. Mm. And then they vary uh, based on the experience of the doula. So um, it could be anything from most doulas will offer one antenatal session, one postnatal session, early attendance in your home and then full attendance during your, your birth. So it would range maybe from 750, 800 euro, uh, perhaps to 1,200, 1,400. Depends what the doula's offering. So some doulas will offer different things. So I would offer, for example, lots of other things. You know, I'm trained in reboso work. I'm trained in using aromatherapy during labor. I'm a classical 
homeopath, so I'm trained in using remedies. Um, I do placenta encapsulation. So, you know, you would uh, offer a lot, a lot mm. of those things. Other doulas might be trained in um, uh, acupuncture or maybe in acupressure or, um, you know, they would have other attributes. So you need to kind of see what, what fits you too. And like I say, there are agencies as well, but obviously you don't get to pick your doula uh, necessarily in, a, in an agency setting. So yeah, mostly online, but I would say, I have to say that the vast majority of my clients, they come from personal referral. Mm. Because, you know, I would be very reluctant to pick out the golden pages and pick a plumber from the golden pages. You know, to pick somebody that's going to be with me all the way through my labor and my birth and a very intimate experience. I probably want someone else who's used that person. I'd want to, to see what other people say. I don't think I'd take it cold from the golden pages mm -hmm. or from, well, from the, from, from the web. So most doulas tend to receive clients from referrals, um, but not always. And it's really important, I think, to meet your doula. And like, that's what I would always do. I'd meet my clients, pers prospective clients. And that's included, as, you know, I'd meet them for free. And we would talk and we would see if we're a good fit for each other because you'd have to feel that you could get on with that person. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd have to feel that you're gonna invite them into an intimate space. Uh, you've got to implicitly trust them uh, and it's hard to know if you can do that or not just on the phone or just by reading somebody's mm -hmm. web page so it's important i think to, to meet to meet them yeah and so what is the evidence to show that doulas are in fact such a great help and a great support for a birthing mother um, you know, there is some evidence-based research surrounding the support of doulas mm. and um, women who have a doula supporting them do have a lower chance of a cesarean birth. And I think a lot of that is to do with the information running up in late pregnancy, mm. supporting them as to whether an induction <coughs> is, I I is appropriate for them right now. <coughs> Uh, and also supporting them during the early part of the labour at home and not coming into hospital too soon. Mm. Of course, doulas do other things as well. <laughs> so, Can like, you? obviously today we did a mother blessing, mm. which is um, such a lovely thing uh, to experience. And uh, I know so many women, loads of my friends saying, I'm just going to get pregnant again so I can have another mother, mother <laughs> <I know>. blessing. <laughs> so it is such a lovely thing to be part of and to feel that you have an opportunity to, again, to express your inner feelings about the pregnancy mm -hmm. and to receive support from the women who are going to support you after you, you have your baby. So thanks so much, Krisha, for coming in and chatting to me because about it, because I know it's something that a lot of people are interested in, but mightn't know too much about it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's something that I would often recommend my students in my pregnancy yoga classes, because I feel like it's it's something that is very accessible to people if they just knew, you know, about it. What I'll do is um, I'll put all the links for you, the link for your website and for the, the doula directory um, in the comments below below this video. And then if anyone has any questions, um, then you can ask in the comments as well. And hopefully I can answer them or I can ask Krisha to answer them. And I hope this has been helpful. So uh, give it a thumbs up if you have enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe to hear more about pregnancy, birth and parenting. Thanks a million. Bye. Bye. <laughs>